And you know that God calls you to pray too, right? In our gospel for today, Jesus says, when you pray. He doesn't say, if you pray, or if you should happen to feel so moved at a certain time when you don't have anything else to do and you might want to pray. No, he says, when you pray, pray like this. And he stresses repeatedly that importance of persistence in prayer. If you look at your gospel text that you have on your celebrate insert, you'll see the analogies that he uses to talk about persistence in prayer. A friend comes to a door asking to borrow bread late at, the, uh, late at night. You don't want to go to the door. You're tired. Your kids are tired. It probably took forever for you to get them to sleep, right? And yet, even though you might not get up just because your friend knocks once at the door, if the friend keeps knocking, you know it's important. And you'll answer the door. And I like that line too. It says, even if only so that you can get some peace, <laughs> you'll answer the door. But persistence pays off. It's un an unusual analogy, in fact. David Losey, a professor at Luther, well, he used to be at Luther, now he's in Pennsylvania. But he writes, the word many people translate as persistent in Jesus' parable on prayer, it would actually be better translated as shameless. I like that. Our petitions to God, Jesus says, should be bold, so bold, just shameless in how bold we are asking God, saying, God, you listen to me. Hear me now. But the truth is, if we're really honest, is that sometimes we get disheartened with prayer. Especially if we've been praying for healing for someone or hope for a situation or for an answer. If nothing ever really seems to change, we can begin to wonder, what do all these prayers mean? And yet, Scripture doesn't invite us to pray just a little bit about something and then let it go. Jesus tells us, keep at it. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Be absolutely shameless about reminding God about our longings and our needs and our hopes and trust that God not only hears those cries but cares deeply about them. Oh, if there's ever a story in scripture that helps us know that the words of the faithful matter to God, we just have to look at our first reading for today. That story of Abraham from the Old Testament Abraham stands alone before the Lord and he pleads for mercy for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he asks the Lord, well, will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose that there are 50 righteous who are in it. Far be it for you, Lord, to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Should not the judge of the earth do what is just? And the Lord says, okay, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. But look at this. Abraham is persistent. He doesn't stop there. He says, okay, well, suppose there are 40 righteous. And then suppose there are 30 righteous. And then suppose finally he gets down to, what if there's only 10 righteous. And the Lord answers, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. Here is a man conversing with God, and it appears that his persistent words have an effect on God. And so why is it so difficult for us to believe that our words affect God too? We can believe that our prayers, they bring about change 
And yet, oftentimes, and this is imperative to note, that when we persistently pray, what changes most is us. That's why when Jesus taught us how to pray, he said, we need to pray for thy will to be done, for God's will to be done. And if our will is not yet in line with what God's will is, that then God will mold us and shape us and help us to get there. When I was a kid, I prayed a lot. And my prayers were very persistent. I remember getting in trouble once in first grade. The teacher got after me and said, offhandedly, she said, you're, you're probably going to have to stay after school sometime this week, Ruth Hetland, and think about what you did. And I was so upset because I never got in trouble, you know. And I was so worried about that possibility that I was going to have to stay after school. It just sounded like a death sentence, you know. And so I prayed and I prayed each night that the teacher would forget about that. <laughs> I would, and I remember I would just fall asleep saying, please, 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 please. And that's, that was my prayer. Please, 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 please. Fall asleep until I said it. Please, please, please. For God to hear my six-year-old cries, I wouldn't have to stay after school. And I never did. <laughs> And I thought, perfect, this, this prayer stuff is golden, right, you know? Well, fast forward to a few years later. My grandmother was in the hospital and she was very sick. My mom told me she'd probably, probably be going to heaven soon. I realized it was obviously time for me to pull out my supernatural prayer ability so every night, every night for a week, I prayed my grandma would not die. Please, 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 please. But by the end of that month, my grandma had gone home to heaven. And I remember so clearly being at the graveside with my family on a cold February morning. There we were our heads bowed, praying to God, the same God who had obviously not been paying attention to my prayers this time. What had changed? I immediately decided I must have done something bad. So God wasn't listening to me that, right now. Or either that or this prayer business was just not all that it was cracked up to be. But time went by and we went, we still went back to church and still my family said prayers together before meals and before bed and and still when times were bad we prayed and and still when times were good we prayed and in time I came to understand that persistent prayer has a lot less to do with seeing how many times I can say please in asking God for stuff and it had a lot more with staying in relationship with God and coming to God in times of joy and times of sorrow. Talking and listening. Trusting that God's will is done when we do that. Developing that sense of trust that comes over time that God is near and God cares and God is our home and God wants to hear from us. And that's not to say that there aren't times when prayer doesn't feel like it's going through the motions, you know? You know what I mean. I know we're not all always filled with the Spirit every time we pray the Lord's Prayer together. There's times where it can feel like going through the motions, but yet, you know too, there's times when those same old prayers move us to tears. I remember not long ago visiting someone in the nursing home. She could hardly speak and her family told me that she hardly recognized anyone anymore. And she hadn't responded to me at all during our visit. In fact, she only half looked at me and then half looked out the window the whole time I was there. But before I left, I prayed the Lord's Prayer beside her. 
And suddenly I saw her lips moving and she was reciting it right along with me. Those precious words had stayed with her and I heard them fresh all over again as we prayed together that day. It seems to me that if prayer is a conversation with God, which is what it is, then it's going to have some similarities with our conversations with each other. Sometimes conversations and prayers are simply brief and in passing, the stuff of daily life. God, help me get this done. God, let that, let so-and-so be safe. God, give me courage to face this day. But sometimes those conversations, those prayers, will feel so full and deep with meaning. But the important thing that we know in healthy communication with each other is that we keep at it, right? We keep talking. That we keep communicating regardless of how we feel. That we keep talking, keep sharing, keep listening, keep spending time together. And in our relationship with God, it's the same way. God wants to hear from you. God wants to know what's in your heart, what's causing you worry. God wants you to lift up your joys to him, your sorrows to him. God wants to hear from you. Spend time in prayer today because God is listening. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we give you such thanks for this day, for this beautiful day, and all that it can hold. We thank you for those who are celebrating momentous occasions. We pray that joyous celebrations are filled with your spirit and that we always give you thanks for those life passages that mean so much. And Lord, we pray for our world. We pray every day for peace that your hand would be very present in all the situations around the world where there's just unspeakable strife and unspeakable discord. And, and we continue to pray fervently that somehow you let a word of peace come from each of us and spread out to help heal this hurting world. God, we pray for all those who are sick all those who are struggling with illness or recovering from surgery or who are spending today in the hospital. Bring them visits from people who love them. Help us to not only hold one another in prayers, but to reach out with visits and cards and just extensions of your grace to help each other along the journey. God, we pray for those who are grieving those who have lost dear loved ones in recent weeks. Grief is such a long, circuitous journey, and, and so help us to hold one another in prayer and to, to speak to one another, uh, to ask how each other are doing. Help us to remember those loved ones are held in your care, to trust in your promises. And God, finally, we pray for our church. We pray that your spirit is present here in the ways that we are faithful. Help us to grow that. In the ways that we are not faithful, help us to learn and to change. Inspire us, God, as your people. Unite us. Help us reach out well to our community and reach out with love. So many prayers, God, we pray. And we pray together again the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer to and uh, it's on your insert. And Arliss is going to play it through entirely once and then we'll sing it the second time. Thank you. 